Time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Throughout the world, only one company produces all types of business machines and systems, Remington Rand, who now invites you to play What's My Line? Meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. I usually introduce the gentleman on my left, but he isn't here, and we don't know who it is tonight. Somehow, he's as much of a mystery as our mystery panelist, so I can't introduce him. But it does give me pleasure for the first time to be able to introduce my colleague of seven years almost on this panel, a girl who is not only known for her splendid and logical mind, but whom I consider a very splendid person indeed, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. No, no. Thank you, Arlene, very much. And uh, I don't know who this is either. Did you peek? There's no there. No clue. But uh, I do know very well the gentleman who is going to be seated on my left, and so do you. He's our traveling panelist. I happen to have a condensed version of his itinerary, so the people out in Notre Dame can look forward to seeing him this week. Also those in Bradley, Michigan, and the University of Indiana. Mr. Bennett Surf. Flint in Cincinnati. <laughs> well, this is a night, uh, I think, since we don't know who our fourth panelist is tonight, I'd like to take a moment to mention the fact that the, a book by our late and beloved regular panelist, the late Fred Allen, is being published this week by Little Brown. It's called Much Ado About Me. And like Fred itself, himself, it's a warm, gracious, witty book. And now on my left, is our wonderful newscaster who's shown again on election night and who moderates this panel so brilliantly, Mr. John Daly. Good evening, and it falls to my lot to lift the veil of secrecy about our missing panelist. I think the best thing for me to do is to introduce him. I can't ask him to come in and sign in, please, but I do ask him to come in and sit down, please. Welcome to Jerry Lewis. It's nice. <laughs> what is that? Quadruple sheeting, huh? Jerry, it's nice to have you with us. Ladies and gentlemen, it's nice to have you with us. And everybody, welcome to What's My Line. We're up to our old tricks tonight. And we trust that with Jerry here, we'll perhaps have a little more fun even than usual. We'll still hope we can stick the panel. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the show. And we'll meet our first challenger in just 30 seconds. All right, hanging on to our hats, let's see if we can't meet our first contestant. Will you come in and sign in, please? Victor W. Nixon, right, sir? from? Uh, Aldershot, England. Aldershot, England. Yes. Well, it's very nice to have you with us, sir. Thank there you. is the panel. We'll give you a very Thank sort you. of informal introduction. And will you come over here and sit down with me? Uh, I wonder if you're familiar with the way we keep score. Uh, yes. Good. If you know how we keep score, let's let everybody at home and those who are with us here in the theater know exactly what your line is. small bit of help we'll give you. Mr. Nixon is self-employed, and I believe in putting the new panel members to work, so why don't you start it off, Jerry Lewis? What? Huh? <laughs> well, <why? laughs> um, you're self-employed? Yes. Is this a profit-making thing you do? Uh, yes. Yeah. We hope. 
What is it? I said, we hope. Oh, I see. Uh, I couldn't guess what he does right off like this, could I? Because I have a sure. feeling he makes chicken fat for fish and chips. <laughs> You make chicken fat no. for fish and chips. No. That'll cost you dear, Mr. Lewis. Thanks a one, lot. <laughs> one down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, Mr. Nixon, do you deal in services? Yes. Uh, could anyone on this panel uh, avail himself of your privileges? Yes, yes. Uh, could all of us? Yes. Uh, would we come to you? Uh, not necessarily, no. Not but, ever? I would say that in the main, in the term of reference with which we deal when Mr. Nixon is um, functioning, we would say people tend to come to Mr. Nixon. Yes. Uh, do you work in an enclosure? Uh, no. no wait a minute. Not always. Small, small thing. Well, the actually, actually, the issue there is it's not always, Dorothy, but Mr. Nixon does work in an enclosure, but he can work outside, too. I see. Um, do you work in something that would be called by any name other than an office? Uh, yes. Would it be called other than a factory? No. Would it be called other than a factory? Oh, other, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. Uh, would you work in something that is not always on the ground? Uh, possible, but... Uh... But I think highly, Improbable. highly, highly <laughs> unlikely. So unlikely, Dorothy would have to give you a no. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Nixon, you know, you have a name that's been bandied about quite a bit in this country in the last few weeks. <laughs> no relation, I take None, whatever. Mr. Nixon, uh, the, the services that you perform, would you say they were of a personal nature? Uh, no. Well, if any one of the members of this panel could avail themselves of these services... Yeah, I would think that we would have to describe, and there is a relationship which is certainly personal that uh, must apply as between Mr. Nixon and uh, whomsoever he may be working with before he can function well, yes. Well, that gets me nowhere. Mr. Nixon, is there any kind of product involved in the services that you perform? No. That's three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Uh, Mr. Vice President, is there any pleasure or game <laughs> or it, uh, associated in what you do? Any what? Is it a pleasurable job? Uh, no job yes, is I pleasurable. Think so. you Yours don't. is, isn't it? <laughs> yes, I'm tired though. <laughs> I think so. Does it afford other people pleasure, what well, you I do? So. I hope so. You hope so? Um, do you usually deal in your job with um, uh, several people at one time? Could you? Uh, yes, occasionally. Does gambling have anything at all to do no. with your... <laughs> no, that's four down and six to go, Mr. Lewis. You were thinking of the Derby, weren't you? I was, you know. Well, I thought that. They I was legit... getting to it myself for a moment. <laughs> they have legitimate bookmakers in London. Yes. Which I must go do, sometime. <laughs> uh... Mr. Nixon, do you, um, do you do what you do here, too? Uh, I could do. I don't at the moment. Oh. <laughs> oh, that makes it perfectly clear. <laughs> uh, you could, if you so choose to do so, you could do it here. Uh, I could, but it'd be rather difficult at the moment. Do you deal in... Uh, did we ask about politics? No. No. He's self-employed, though. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> self-employed. Mm. Well, you say you could possibly do it here, but right now it isn't probable. Uh, it would be rather, rather difficult. Rather difficult. He deals with Big Ben or something. <laughs> Big thing. Was, um, you, you, boy. <laughs> I think I made a mistake coming here all together. <laughs> You're doing fine, Jerry. Uh, well, let, let me say this. Let me just uh, take a stab in the dark. Uh, Mr. Nixon, what you do is this... Uh, we asked if it was pleasurable for you, but is this pleasurable for those that receive what you do? Oh, yes. 
Oh, boy. <laughs> it wouldn't have anything to do... Uh, it wouldn't have anything to do with physical therapy in any way. No, no, no. I'm glad I got out of that. <laughs> five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. I'm going to give you one more minute because I don't think you're even getting close to this. Mr. Nixon, could a member of royalty enjoy your work? Oh, yes. Uh, but they have done. They have done. Yes. I see. Uh, do people watch you when you do what you do? Yes. Would you say that you were connected with any branch of the entertainment business? Well, you could call it that, yes. Uh, are you a performer? Yes. Uh, uh, are you either a mind reader or a pickpocket? A mind reader or a pickpocket? Yes. One or the other? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Dorothy, that's wonderful. <laughs> and Dorothy, you have no idea how well you built, because you said, are you a mind reader or a pickpocket? And this is the great Nixon who is father to Vic Perry, who was with us last February as a pickpocket and who took the watch off my wrist, oh, remember? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> so you scored a double shot there. Well, we had him in trouble for a while, sir, and thanks very much Thank for coming much. to see it. It's good to have you in. Well, I thought you were going to run dry on that one, but you didn't. Let's see what you can do with another challenger. Would you sign in, please, ma'am? Elsie? Lawrence, right? Is it Miss or Mrs.? Mrs. Mrs. Lawrence, right. and where are you from, Mrs. Lawrence? Long Island City. Long Island City, New right. York. Fine. Right. Well, these people are all familiar to you then, aren't they? Huh? Right. The one asleep, the second from the end, is Jerry Lewis. <laughs> Come with me. <laughs> now, let me see if we can't um, find out right off, the, right off the bat if you're familiar with our scoring system, are you? Yes. You are? All yes. right, then let's tell everybody at home and those here what it is you actually do, what your line really is. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Panel, Mrs. Lawrence is salaried. And Dorothy, you performed so brilliantly, I think we'll start you off this time. <laughs> Mrs. Lawrence, do you work for a profit-making organization? Yes. Do you deal directly with people? Yes. Well, I'll ask the same question that I asked of the gentleman who preceded you. Could anyone on this panel enjoy your services? Yes. Well, I mean, I think here we're getting out of our basic <laughs> term of reference. While it is true in a very small way that you could be the end recipient of the service and to that degree enjoy it. I don't think that you would necessarily come in touch with the service in such a personal way, Dorothy, as to describe it that way. Get it. So what I just want mean? you to be careful. That oh, just I means see. don't... It doesn't uh, mean no, though. No, no, I don't think we can give you a no on it, but I don't want right. you to be misled. Either. I see. All right. Um, can both men and women avail themselves of your services? Yes. Both men and women can indeed receive a service as an end result of the work that uh, is done by Mrs. All Lawrence. right, I'll ask the fatal question. Is there a product involved in what you do? Yes. Well, uh, is it a useful product? Oh, yes. Would it be found in the home? Oh, yes. Would it be found in what might be called the average American home? Yes. You think most people have one of these? Well, now, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think there, on the basis of this, the product with which Mrs. Lawrence specifically deals, and the use of the term average, we have to give you a no. That's one down to nine to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Lawrence, you're a very healthy, robust lady. Uh, I, I wonder if the product that you deal in uh, can be taken internally. Yes. It can. Yes. Is it uh, nourishing? Oh, yes. Well, now, wait a minute. <laughs> Mrs. Lawrence is in a very generous mood. I would think technically we probably should say no to that one, but Mrs. Lawrence feels that we should give you a yes and no and not be too technical about it. Well, it is, tech it is this thing that is taken internally, is it a solid? A solid? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's a solid? It's a yeah. solid? Solid. 
Jackson? <laughs> does it, uh, does it, is it, is it attractive to the palate? Does it taste good? Yes. It does taste good? Sure. You're the authority on this, because I must admit, I can't tell you whether it tastes good or not. Oh, that's interesting. Mrs. Lawrence says it does. You don't know whether it tastes good or not? Uh, would this be taken for medicinal or health-giving purposes? Yes. And John doesn't know whether it tastes good or not? <laughs> you know I'd never take anything that was healthy, Bennett. <laughs> Is this, could this be then called a kind of medicine? Yes. It could. Mm -hmm. And it's a solid. And it tastes good. Sure. Is it some kind of a tablet or pill? Yes. Has it got vitamins in it? Yes. I well, know what it is already. What? Gary? Want me to help? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. She makes diet pills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Oh. 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 You got it right, Gary. <laughs> Actually. Doesn't she take them at any time? <laughs> Mrs. Lawrence has asked me to advise you, Mr. Lewis, that she has lost 40 pounds. <laughs> oh. 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 Actually, to clear this all up, uh, Mrs. Lawrence describes her line more specifically as packaging reducing pills, Amplus, which are made by the Charles Pfizer Company, and you can only get them by prescription, so that we're not trying to get anybody to rush to the drugstore and get them. You have to have a doctor's pres prescription to get them, which is why, Dorothy, I said you wouldn't find them in the average home. You must have a I prescription I think you're absolutely right, John. Lawrence, Very fair. Uh, how long are you going to keep on taking these pills? Well, I lose 55 more pounds. 55 more? <laughs> Gosh. If you put on 55 more pounds instead of taking off, you could play with the L.A. Rams this <laughs> Mrs. Lawrence, we're going to flip all the cards. We had a wonderful oh, time with you, and thank you so much for being our guest. In just a moment, we'll meet tonight's mystery. Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery, <laughs> mystery guest, for which I've asked my friends on the panel to put on their blindfolds. <laughs> Jerry Lewis has got his on. Get that up where it belongs there, Lewis. Are all those blindfolds in place? Ours are. All right, fine. Then will the mystery challenger come in and sign in, please? case of our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. You ask one question at a time in turn, moving clockwise, and we'll begin it with Arlene Francis. Uh, are you associated in some way with show business? Uh, yes. Mr. Lewis. Um, are you a performer in the literal sense of the word? We, oui, we, oui, we. Oui. Mr. What Gilgar. is that, he said? <laughs> That's yes. yes. He's a little That's performer. Yes. Wee wee. Miss uh -huh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Gilgallon? <laughs> Are you in the motion pictures? See, si, see. Si. Uh -huh. Sir? See, si, see. I can't see, see. <laughs> uh, there was a strange, it seemed to me there was more applause after you signed in than when you walked out. So I wonder if it's possible that your chief fame is uh, because of your reputation rather than visually. Is that correct? Je ne sais pas. I, I would I don't say that. That, that it probably, then it, that our guest is known visually to, to great numbers of people, but at the same time, I would have to admit that he has a towering reputation, uh, which rises even above the identification factor. Thank you. Ms. Francis? I'm in Pittsburgh. Uh, <laughs> but the, uh, the gentleman is a performer, you said, or he said, or we weed. The gentleman, the gentleman does perform, yes. He performs, but he performs mostly behind the scenes, am I led to understand? What was this reading you just gave? <laughs> <laughs> see, you see. 
Yes, I think that in balance, we would have to say that uh, behind the scenes is the principal area of operation. Uh huh. Mr. Lewis? Uh, but you do both behind the scenes as well as in front of the camera. Is that correct? Am no, I to believe? No, no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's right. right. Yeah. That is true. Do I go again? Yes, you go ahead, because you were merely re establishing an already recorded fact. Oh, thanks a heap. Uh, well, well then, uh, let me ask this. Do you work alone? Oh, no, no, no. No. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Are you in any way associated with the production end of motion pictures? We, oui, ma'am, sir, we. Oui. Mr. Sir? I, I, think I, I think I know that voice from personal acquaintance. Are you beloved by millions and millions of children? It's Gulliver. <laughs> <laughs> the answer to that would have to be yes, Bennett. I, I, can I take a stab? What do yes, you, want you to can want? take a stab. I think it's Walt Disney. You're right. Yeah. I was afraid to use the falsetto because that's the mouse. <laughs> <laughs> that would have given it all away, Walt. No, I, I, actually, uh, you did very well. That, all those that foreign languages and things. You know, actually, Walt is a man of very great courage. Next Tuesday, I guess it is, next Tuesday, Saturday evening, Post is going to come out with an article written about Walt Disney by his daughter. And as far as I know, he's planned to stay in town and even in the country, aren't you? Well, uh, I think I should leave town. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure it was a conspiracy on the part of all the women in my family to give the lowdown. Aye. Okay. Aye, must say. And everybody had something to say in it, except my, uh, there's one female that, that uh, didn't say a word, and that's my dog. Your dog yes. didn't say anything. Well, they do say a man's best friend. Could I ask that's you a question, right. uh, Walt? When we had lunch together in Hollywood, you gave me a long list of all the wonderful additions you're going to put into Disneyland this year. Are they coming along? Well, I, I completed those. I'm starting on next year. The, the chair lift that's going oh, over yes, the whole of that end? And the Palm Sawyer Island that you tell me about? I made it. I made it in time for the summer season. Now I'm starting on my next year's plans, which... I May I? Oh, I'm sorry, sure. Bennett. I just wanted to say, give a plug to Disneyland. I think it's the most wonderful place <laughs> for kids and adults I've ever visited in my life. I just wanted to ask Walt a question. Walt, did you check with the government and see if they needed any money lately? <laughs> <laughs> Money he's put into this place. Oh, for heaven's sake. Now, I would like, actually, it's no secret that Walt and I have worked basically in another network, but I'm more interested in, in what uh, you think now about television after two or three years of exposure. And... Well, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. You get to uh, reach people in a sort of an immediate way with uh, the pictures. You work for years, and uh, then it's quite a while before you know how... Uh, what you're working on is going to come out, how it's going to be received. But with television, you know, uh, well, in a very short time. Do you find it's, it's a burden water over the other working habits? Or oh, no. No, I think it's, I found it very stimulating. Very stimulating. For the whole staff, everybody, it's been a, a great stimulus for the whole oh, organization. That's fine. That's good, mm -hmm. you know, because that makes it sound like Mr. Walt Disney is going to stay in television, which is what I really wanted him to do. <laughs> Walt, thanks I very think I much. Made it. <laughs> it's glad to have you with us, and nice that you have been our guest. Will you say hello to Bennett? And The panel did, panel did very well, and uh, so did Jerry Lewis. And I'm going to take just a few seconds, if I made it, say that um, I take very great pleasure in sharing with Jerry participation in muscular dystrophies, doing something about it. I was going to say something about it tonight because I didn't know Jerry was going to be here. It was a surprise to me, too. But I think that uh, my job should be taken over because this is closer to Jerry's heart than anybody that I know. So, Jerry, why don't you... Say a few words about muscular Well, thank you very much, John. I will be very brief, and I will just say that <clears throat> due to the fact that television is one of the great exposures entertainment-wise and that you reach so many people at, at one time, I would like to mention that November is the Muscular Dystrophy March. The firefighters all over America will be coming to your homes as well as your neighbors asking for contributions to help wipe out this vicious victim, this vicious disease, I should say, to the 135,000 victims, the children 
We certainly have no right to have this, and, and we'd like your help and would appreciate your giving all you possibly can. And I thank you, John, very much. And I join Jerry in the hope that you will open your hearts and your pocketbooks. Now, before our panel says good night, here is a word from next week's. Well, there we are. Jerry thank Lewis you. lived through the half hour, and so did we. It was nice to have him with us. And so until next week, this is John Daly saying good night, Miss Arlene Francis. Good night, John. And come back and surprise us again, Jerry, please. Thank you, Arlene. I will be very happy to. And good night, Dorothy. You were funny. Well. <laughs> You're terrific <laughs> yourself. <laughs> Good night, Bennett. Good show tonight, I think. Good night, John. <laughs> Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on What My Line. Travel arrangements on What's My Line are made through American Airlines. American Airlines flies our contestants in luxurious comfort aboard DC-7 flagships. This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production in association with the CBS Television Network. Be sure to see Remington Rand's great new television program, Gunsmoke, Saturday night on this same network. <laughs> <laughs>